Hello and welcome back to the blackboard. We are going to continue with the inner product spaces and do a couple of examples of like the general inner products. And so our first example is going to be a proof of showing that a function is an inner product. I think that's I think that's how you're supposed to say it. I could be wrong. But it is it, it does involve some calculus. And so if you do have a strong calculus background or taking calculus, that's good. If not, try to bear with with me in this one. Um, it's not like too heavy, but it, it's it's nice to have like some understanding of calculus. So let's get started. So in this example, we are going to let f and uh, g be real value functions in the vector space c a b. And so we have to show that the dot product or the inner product of f and g is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x times g of x dx. And got to show that it defines an inner product. So to show that something is an inner product, we have to, it has to satisfy four axioms. And so the first one is, let me see if I can write them real quick. The first one is fg is equal to gf second one is what was the second one f g plus h is equal to is it fg plus fh i think that's how it's supposed to be the third one is the constant fg is equal to cfg and then the last one is what is the last one i think it's um when it's by itself, it's greater than or equal to zero. And f of f is equal to zero if f is zero. I think that's that's the fourth one. Or I think that's how you write it. But you have to show that each one of these are true. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first one, um, which should probably be the easiest one and so we just got to show that the inner product of fg is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x g of x dx and when we know about um like real value functions and and most i think it's most functions in general that the functions satisfy the commutative property of multiplication so this is pretty much the same thing as g of x times f of x dx which we can rewrite it as the inner product of gf so the first one is satisfied cool the second one let me actually write the numbers second one different color <laughs> The second one is f g plus h. So again, it's the same thing. So a b is equal to f of x, and then this is all multiplied by g of x plus h of x. And we can do we can distribute the f of x with the g of x and h of x. And so we'll have the integral from a to b of f of x g of x plus f of x h of x dx. And we can separate it into two integrals because you can separate additive integrals. So that'll be f of x, g of x, dx, 
plus the integral from the same bounds f of x h of x dx and then we can see here that this part is just the inner product of f and g and this here is the inner product of f and h supposed to be a angle bracket and so we just showed that this is same as f of g or the inner product of f and g plus the inner product of f and h so it satisfies the second um, axiom the next one is the constant one which i believe is probably the easiest one to do so number three it's c yeah c f g and so this is the same thing as a constant times a, um times the integral from a to b of f of x g of x not f g of x f of x g of x dx and if you remember back in calculus you can put in the c inside the integral it doesn't matter where it goes so this is a b c of f of x times g of x dx and this pretty much tells us that this is the inner product of c times f g Another, another thing we can like alternatively do is write f of x, not comma, c g of x dx. And so that should be f c g, which it, they're both the same <clears throat> because um multiplication is commutative here so it satisfied the third one and then the last one would be the inner product spaces of just one function of itself so if we take any function nice hopefully it doesn't pick it up <laughs> but if we take any function and multiply it by itself. Okay, if we take any function and multiply it by itself, so in this case, squaring it, um, you will, you will, or you should know that this would always be greater than or equal to zero for all uh, x uh, in the set of real numbers. And so what that essentially means is <clears throat> when you take the interval from A to B of f of x quantity squared dx, that will also be greater than or equal to zero. And it's, it's, it's always greater than zero. So this is also the same thing as the inner product of f and f itself. And so the only way we can have this to equal zero is If f is 0, then we'll have the integral from a to b of 0 dx, and that should be 0. Or if a is equal to b. And if you remember uh, in calculus, when the integral integrals of integration, like intervals of integration, integrands, I think they're integrands, if the integrands are the same, doesn't matter what the function is it will always be zero and so yeah that that that's pretty much it for this question so the reason why i decided to put in a little bit of calculus here 
is because this this inner product yeah this inner product is very helpful it's very useful it's very crucial as you go to higher level mass more specifically once when you uh, start learning about partial differential equations um, we are going to have functions that we have to make or we have to have two functions be orthogonal to each other and then from there if we take the their dot product which is the one that we just proved we will see that there will be some sort of I believe it's function or constant no it'll be some sort of constant that that it will that the that the dot product will equal to at a specific term while the other terms just go to zero and this would be like very useful to solving like partial differential equations and then finding um the specific solution of a given pde so yeah it's if you're gonna go into like higher level math uh, i highly suggest like you get familiar with this i might have some examples here i could be wrong i have to double check but yeah that was pretty much it and so i'll see you guys in the next one